Why the hell so many people are trying to tell me to slow down? Seems like motherfuckers should be shutting the hell up and enjoying the show. All right, so you re- you ready, Mr. Kevin Blatt? Blatt, yeah. Blatt, Blatt, Blatt. All right, you're back for a second time. Listen. Yes, and let me tell you something. I thought I knew you. I didn't hardly know you at all, man. You didn't the know, did you? Of, man, the amount of love that I got in the last week is almost immeasurable. And I got to say, uh, to all the women who have been hitting me up, inquiring whether I was gay, single, Ooh. like chocolate in my vanilla, to give a quote from a few of them. Uh-huh. Uh, I am single and I do love women. And, uh, you know, I don't think uh, I, we'll see what happens. But all I'm saying is thanks for all the love. Thanks for all the positive <laughs> feedback. I've never, and I've done 2020, I've done 60 Minutes, I've done Howard Stern, I've done every single media thing you could think of. And I didn't get the amount of comments or reaction as I have here. So that says yeah, something we... about your viewers. Your viewers are something else, man. We're pretty real over here. You know, it's not all staged and commercial. It's real love. They're going to tell you if they love you, and they're going to tell you if they fucking hate you, okay? So that that's our but, viewers. We d- yeah. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things about, in case you haven't noticed this about me, I like to keep it real, too. So uh, Yeah, uh, th- that's what they liked. That's what they yeah, liked. We're a match, so. we're a match made in heaven. We are a match made in heaven. And I'm a little hungover right now, so, I mean, it's I okay. took the sunglasses off because I, I didn't want to look like a douchebag. It's awesome. okay, it's like issue, you right? you were uh they got to see your eyes. It's okay. They understand when you hung over. You yeah, wanna... they, yeah, they <laughs> they know. They know. <laughs> no, so you were at the after show for the Dave Chappelle uh uh concert. <laughs> well let, let me let me let me rephrase that. We were set up to go to the after show for Dave Chappelle. We were at the comedy store earlier. My friend Richie, who runs the comedy store, shout out to Richie. Uh, and everybody at the comedy store. We were there the other night. My brother and I decided we wanted to go and see Fat Tuesdays. Years ago, Guy Tory, big famous comic, did a uh, special night at the comedy store on Tuesday. Okay. And it was really the precursor to Deaf Comedy Jam. Okay. Uh, with the DJ, the hip hop element of it. You know, it's just the, the stand up comedy. So my brother and I, uh, we, we go down there. And growing up, my brother and I were huge Russell Simmons Deaf Comedy. We were in the culture, as you know. So for us to go to Fat Tuesday, it was cool. And Mike Epps just dropped in uh, you know, unannounced and killed the room. But it was funny because Mike was, you know, for like eight minutes, it turned into a black club. And my brother and I <laughs> were once again the token white guys that we mm-hmm. felt like they were cracking on the whole time, which is cool. But, man, Mike Epps was great. So then afterwards, uh, Richie was going to bring us over to the party across the street, and I was hanging out out back with um, the Rosemaster, De- uh, Jeff Ross, who had just come from the Hollywood Bowl. He was part of the package, and he was like, man, Dave just got attacked on stage. Guy had a knife, and he got fucked up. We were like, what does that mean? Man, Dave's security, <clears throat> no joke. One of Dave's security guards broke his hand. He hit that dude so hard. So, as you can imagine, I look at my brother. My brother and I, you know, look, man, we get up early. We get up at 6.30 in the morning. He's got a whole life. He's got a kid, the whole nine yards. I I like to get up early in the day and start my day. Dave Chappelle and his friends, Buster Rhymes, and all the guys, John Stewart, all the guys that were with him, these guys party all night long for a living. I mean, they literally party until 8 o'clock in the morning. I can't do that. So, like, right around 2.15, I start yawning. But I'm watching all the cars pull up. I see my girl, Linnell, pull up. And, yeah. I was just like, D, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. And he looked at me and goes, thank God you said something because I'm too tired to go in there. And then I said, dude, I also don't want to, like, be around an element where everybody's on guard, everybody's, like, freaking out, yeah. you know, because the security would have been hectic. So we did not go into the actual party, but we were there and saw everybody pull up. And, and just so it LA's didn't stop shit. Because, so it didn't stop shit at all. I mean, it was very secure so i mean you weren't getting into that party unless you knew somebody or you knew dave and you know i've met dave a couple times but we ain't like we ain't like that okay you know so i mean we saw the guy um, i mean arms twisted up i mean they really beat his ass i heard that jamie fox was 
amongst one of the security guards that helped to whoop his ass too uh, for jumping on stage. Allegedly. 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 Right. We got to put You're that right. out Allegedly. there because, you know, I, I got to be honest. Sued. And you know how. <laughs> You know how this country is with lawsuits, right? So, oh, of course. You know, that guy actually, he, as much as he is the villain here and he jumped onto the stage with a weapon, that guy's going to end up suing everybody on that stage that stomped him. You wait and see. Oh, because, you already know. You already know. I already know. And you know, Jamie, yeah, Jamie and Dave and all these guys already admitted to stomping on him on stage. So I was like, Ugh. even though it was self-defense to some extent, you know, once you subdue a guy and he's no longer a threat, you have that pile on thing on. That's a loss. So we'll see what happens. Man. I mean, Hopefully but he was armed, can... though. Like, when you're armed with a knife, you, you just never know, especially um, living in America these days. Like, you don't know how far. So, I mean, the man was, he was trying to kill him. Like, when you have a knife charging at somebody, yeah. he was trying to take Dave out. Yeah. Now, I heard it was over that LGBTQ. Uh, 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 disagreement he had, you know, with that Netflix stuff going on, and the guy was supposedly LGBT, yeah, uh, part of that community, and so um, uh, he was just trying to make a statement. He had made a diss song about Dave Chappelle some years ago, and they found out that this has been a growing beef, and I guess the Netflix stuff on the transgenders just really set him off. Hey, listen, I know that we all enjoy a glass of wine or two during my show, okay? Preferably fuckery Fridays. And y'all got stuff to do tomorrow morning, and I feel bad about that. And that's why I partnered with Z-Biotics, a pre-alcohol probiotic drink. We're going to load our body with a pre-alcohol probiotic drink with zero calories. All I'm going to do is take this shot before my show or before I head out, okay, for a night of a few drinks, okay? We like to promote healthy and responsible drinking here. I want you to try it. There's a cool science behind this. And once you order your box, it's gonna come with a cool little pamphlet. I want you to take a minute just to read that little card here to learn more about the company and they'll tell you exactly how it works. So before my next show, I want you to stop what you're doing right now and I want you to click the link below and take advantage of the 15% off your first order. And remember, Z-Biotic stands behind their products, which means they offer a 100% money back gift guarantee where they doing that at where they doing that who you know doing that nobody okay so take advantage of the coupon code below hitting tasha k all right we out let me go ahead and start this show and get drinking yeah i guess i mean look everybody's trying to become famous everybody's trying to shoot their shot right so like if this yeah. is the way the guy thought he was going to be able to get there then whatever but it's dangerous and and you know one has to ask how the hell did this guy get past the metal detectors at the hollywood bowl i go there all the time man you could barely even bring in a bottle of wine. I mean, there are shows you bring your own picnic baskets and stuff. Right. But they go through your shit. They go through your shit. So I don't know how that happened. Yeah, if I was Dave, I would probably sue the venue. <laughs> I will say hit... Dave is. Dave is the coolest cat on the planet, I've hands heard, down. I don't know if you will ever meet a guy who is as big as he is and as humble as he is. I mean, the guy will sit there and talk to you and talk to a homeless person the same way he's talking to, you know, Bill Gates. He's just mm -hmm. that guy. And to go back to Yellow Springs, Ohio, where he lives after jetting around this country and being a rock star, that says a lot because I grew up in Ohio. And I... Uh oh. Podunk, white town. Okay, okay. I thought oh. I had lost you there because you had froze doing this here. I was like, oh, 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 and we're going to talk about your Dr. Phil visit here in a minute, but I want to go ahead and get to the meat of why we're here, okay? And so everyone yeah. was DMing me after your, after your interview, and they're like, Tasha, Kevin was right. Kevin was right. And I'm like, well, he is due to come back for part two because I want to talk to you yeah. about you know, the porn industry and how OnlyFans has kind yeah. of taken over and Pornhub, because that's your, that's your, you know, your old business. I don't know if it's still your current business, but I mean, that's, this is the part of a business you built, but, um, you know, talking about the staged, uh, uh, sex tape with, uh, Kim Kardashian and Ray J, um, since her whole Hulu show has premiered, uh, and yeah. I guess Kanye, uh, acted as if he flew to meet Ray J to get a, to get a video and drop no, it off at Kanye, Kim. You wait, said, wait, wait, wait. Let's clarify that. Kanye was not part of that. 
this was stuff that's concocted alongside of it. Kanye would never be down with this type of behavior. That's why Kanye mm -hmm. isn't part of the Kardashian family. He couldn't deal with that family. If you read up on it, you'll see where he was just completely annoyed, does not want his kids anywhere near social media. So you think, I mean, I could only imagine he's probably through the roof pissed off right now that they use their kid as part of a storyline for the first episode of the Kardashians, finding the alleged uh, Kim Kardashian tape. I mean, this is everything that Kanye is opposed against. And Kanye may be maybe crazy as hell, but he's right here, man. Like, imagine Tasha. He doesn't even want his kids on social media and flips out to Kim over allowing them to do the TikTok stuff. Yeah. How do you think he feels about seeing his kid in, in the Hulu special on the first episode and, and they're enjoying her sex tape with this? And the kid's a minor. Like, the mm -hmm. whole thing is just sick. It's sick. It's extremely sad. It's, it's, it's. Yeah, no, it's sad and it's sick, but Kanye was not a part of it. They made up a storyline or what they call out here an arc for their first show. And the arc they felt being as creative as they were was going to have to center around a sex tape that's 18 years old. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. If this woman has built such a huge empire and she has, and she's worth billions of dollars, they've got the Skims company, they got, all these different products and perfumes to lotions. Why couldn't you like make the first episode about something about your business or, or going public or no, they had to revert back to the thing that made her famous to begin with. And that's sex. Thing. Well, I guess they're trying to milk it for all they can. Like it got us this much. Let's see if we can continue to, to pull whatever we, we can out of there. And they have built a, a, a pretty, substantial dynasty i mean they they showcased a lot of that just during the intro um to the new hulu series i couldn't get through it i mean it's like me watching kindergartners have conversations with each other i i it's hard for me to get through i watched it just so i could report on it but i'm like i'm i'm literally losing brain cells as i watch this well, I, I i tried to watch the very first <laughs> season of it back when the, the Jenners were kids and Bruce was still part of the whole thing, mm -hmm. I couldn't get past the vocal fry. And the vocal fry is like the way that, you know, the Kardashians yeah. talk. And it's always about going out to lunch. And that, that's, the, yeah. that's the vocal fry. And it's so San Fernando Valley meets like, I don't know, man. I just, the whole thing's so contrived. And we talked about that last time. There, there is no we such thing as reality television. The only reality television that you ever saw was cops. Yeah. Reality. <laughs> you, you see cops getting thrown down. Listen, especially there was a scene one time where a crackhead called the police on a prostitute. And she's t the crackhead took the money or something like that. I don't know. And she wanted the police to get it back from the prostitute. I guess the prostitute said, I don't sell crack. I sell pussy. The po police was like, okay. <laughs> Like that's the you can't you. make what? that shit up. You can't make it up. No. But um, no. Ray J has since come out to finally, after all these years, all these speculations. Um, I believe yeah. the president of Viacom did an interview with Vlad TV and said that it was it was a setup deal. So he doesn't understand why Kim was able to file a lawsuit or tried to file a lawsuit. I mean, all that was kind of staged for publicity. Um, the tape was. Uh, definitely uh, negotiated with her and her mother at the table and she selected yeah. the scenes that she wanted to go in there and things that she wanted cut out and so they're not understanding why all of a sudden like she's playing dumb to the fact okay and so um, it's kind of always been some talk you meeting with Ray J knew what it was about yeah man and that's all the original stuff yeah I mean look like I said in the last episode <clears throat> There was stuff in that tape that had it come out or was not, if it was left in the final cut, I don't believe that that family would be as famous as they are today. And I don't believe they would have built a brand on that. Again, a lot of stuff gets X'd out of a lot of different things you watch on television. It's called editing. You edit out all the bad stuff or you edit out stuff that could get you in trouble. That's gone and you make it as clean as you can. Look, Paris did the same thing with her tape why you don't see any graphic insertion you don't see any you know penetration you don't see uh, a cum shot to the face you don't see stuff like you would normally see in regular porn it's 
because Paris had final cut and Tim had final cut. And today on TMZ, I was just reading before I called in with you that Chris came out and said that, or, or they said that Chris was not involved in the negotiation of her daughter's sex. Well, of course, she's going to say that. What mother supports their daughter getting into porn? Well, I should rephrase that. I know a couple people whose mothers kind of knew what they did. But in this particular case, this was already post Paris Hilton. Like, they knew what they were getting involved with with this thing. You know, now the blowback's happening. And again, I predict that this is the year that the Kardashians fall. Uh, it happens. Look, once you get big and you're white hot, you know, like the Osbournes. I'll, I'll give a better example. Remember the Jersey okay. Shore? Those kids yes. were about as hot as you could get for a long time. It was about eight or nine years these kids were hot. And then all of a sudden, man, you get, you get tired of them. They become cartoons and characters of themselves. And then it goes away. I think the Kardashians have made enough money that I don't know how they could put up with the amount of, of insanity. You know, every other week there's a story about someone breaking into one of their homes or hopping a fence or them having absolutely no security whatsoever. I don't know, man. Living in, L in L.A., I see it every day. You go to a restaurant, this is the only city in the country where you see this every time a door opens at a restaurant. Everybody goes and looks to see who's coming in, right? It's the only only place. And everywhere you go, everything's methodical. You're not leaving your house wearing a baseball cap and a pair of jeans to go to Craig's. Oh, You're no. Gonna get all dressed dollars. to the you, nine. You know the paparazzi goes there. You, it's part of the machine. The publicist sends them after they get in trouble. Hey, you got to go to Craig's for dinner. I made your reservation. I told them you're going to be there at 730. I tipped off the paparazzi. They'll be there. They're going to be asking you these questions. This is how you're going to answer them. It's all bullshit. Oh, of course. I know. I'm like, how do paparazzi know exactly when this celebrity going to walk in? They publish this call. But the thing is, the thing <clears throat> is, Tosh, we are a stupid culture, as I said in your last show. And people just believe everything that, they're, that they see on television. And I don't want to get political here for, for a moment, but you can imagine what side of the table I sit on with politics. And for me to watch people just buy everything, you know, from the conspiracy theories and, and the virus isn't real to lizard people. And, you know, it's like. <laughs> but they believe the Kardashians. Really... Oh, man. They believe the Kardashians <laughs> over everything. They don't believe and COVID, even... but they believe. <laughs> man, they, they don't believe COVID is real, but they believe that Kim and her sisters go to lunch in Woodland Hills at 1030 in the morning with complete outfits from you know, haute couture designers. That's ridiculous. But they believe it and they eat it up. So what happens? Yeah, no. Good for them. It's, That's it's, why they're worth $100 million to Hulu, I suppose. I, I don't even understand how they were able to negotiate a deal like that in this in this climate of streaming. Me neither. I'm negotiating a, <laughs> negotiating a deal with Hulu right now. They don't even want to come up five grand to me. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Love you, Hulu. Love you, Hulu. Love you, Disney. Yeah. I want to work with you guys, but come on. Yeah, you can afford I, to pay I, Kim I, that kind of money. You can afford Kay Bezel. And, and it's all around a sex tape. Shout out to Disney. Okay. Um, Shout out to Disney. <laughs> Ray J hit Kim Kardashian's DM after, I guess, right. an episode premiere where Kim was talking about um, Ray J sticking a dildo in her ass while she was asleep. <laughs> now, Ray. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now, yeah, of course, I got sleeping. everybody talk. Yeah, while she was sleeping. So Ray J hit her DM and said, uh, that's rape. Why would you do that? And why would you not wake up if I stuck a deal, dildo in your ass? And he's tired. He's like, why are we still talking about this? Like, we all negotiated. We all made a lot of money. We all built big careers from that tape that we all organized. And why are you doing this? Why are you making me out? to look like this your mother was at the front of the negotiations what did you feel like wh what was your initial reaction when you read the messages that he posted between him and kim kardashian because she did respond well the first thing i'm thinking is okay how cavernous is this woman <laughs> how cavernous are these openings that she could somehow have these dildos inserted while she's sleeping and not even know they're in there that's what i'm thinking like come on yeah. girl you must have some coochie the, the size of New Jersey, but 
that was a joke. But anyway, <laughs> no, it's fine. Anyway, I was like, ooh, okay. I, mean, I was waiting. I was waiting for the applause, and I realized, no, it's just, yeah, we're not. Um, I think the whole thing was just really ridiculous, and okay. for them to even make that quote. For them to even release that quote or make that part of the show, it's just so ludicrous. But again, they also know that they're going to eat it up. Anything salacious, anything having to do with sex always gets eyeballs. I was golfing yesterday. As I'm playing golf, I kid you not, my phone starts blowing up. I'm like, what did I do? What did I say? Did Tasha, did Tasha put out another excerpt or something? Like something must have really gone down. And then I realized, oh, it's the Ray J shit. People are calling me up and they're all going, bro, you were telling the truth. I knew it. I knew what you were telling me was, I'm like, I've been talking about this for 15 years. And everybody was like, no, she wasn't behind it. No, she was mad. She sued Vivid. And I would be like, yeah, she sued Vivid because you had to have a paper trail to make it look like she was enraged. You know, when you get paid in cash or you get paid through a mysterious shell company, that the porn company is sending money to every single month. Yeah, of course, there's no way you're going to prove that she was getting paid directly from Vivid. But, you know, dude, these are multi-million dollar, you know, owners of these companies, and they have the best lawyers. And, you know, Kardashian was the daughter of a lawyer. Like, they had it all figured out, exactly how to fleece America and make them all believe that she wasn't part of it. And, again, we love to sell the sizzle with the steak, so to speak, right? And yeah. This was all sizzle, all sizzle, and everybody bought 100% that she had a gun put to her head and that she had a saddle. Bullshit. Yeah, because the lawsuit definitely disappeared. Same thing with Paris, man. It's just it's the way that you make these things happen and, and you make them look like oh. there's outrage. You can't just ignore it. You know, that's what Pam and Tommy did. They ignored it. And they said, well, what's this internet thing? You know, obviously the internet's not going to be anything big. We never heard of it. And who's going to see it? And meanwhile, I'm talking to you, and you got a million subscribers just on your channel alone. So you can imagine the yeah. shock and awe that happened with Pam and Tommy. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about Kim's nonchalant response? Like, oh, calm down, Ray J. It's not that big of a deal. Watch the next episode, and this is going to be gone. That's her way of saying this to Ray J. Like, seriously, that is exactly what that is. She's literally mm -hmm. giving her middle finger to Ray J by mm -hmm. placating in that way. Look, I will say this. You know, I know Ray J. I've met with him several. I've hung out with him probably four or five times. Mm -hmm. Met with him twice. I actually met with Ray J a second time on Melrose at a friend's shop, and that was actually a very funny scenario. The same third party who introduced me to Ray J at the Cheesecake Factory many years earlier when I got fucked by Ray J because he went around me and went to see Hirsch and Vivid instead of doing my deal. Uh, he brought me to go see Ray J again all these years later. And he comes walking in the back of his shoe store. And we're like in this private area. He starts showing me all the footage of the other stuff that he has. And he's like, yeah, man, I want to get a half a million for this. And this is all the outtakes of, of footage. And I'm like, oh, I think I remember seeing this when you – Fucked me the first time. Yeah. And they said, yeah, man, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, but let's make some money. And then all of a sudden, he leaves. He had this little he had this little dog in this little carry case. Yeah. But got it. Okay. He goes, I got to go. I got to meet you. I'll be back. And he takes off on an electric bike. And I'm looking at my buddy like, did Ray Jane just leave us here with his dog and his assistant? We're in the middle of trying to talk business. And just then... The whole ceiling came down five seconds later, and all this asbestos laden stuff. My friend and I went running out of this office, and I'm sure when he watches this interview, he's going to say, Holy shit, I forgot about that. But literally twice, Ray J kind of like left me at the altar. So, like, all these years later, I have a podcast slash radio show on Dash mm -hmm. Radio with Two Short. And I tell a story about what was originally in the first sex tape. Mm -hmm. Ray J, who's friends with Too Short, calls him up screaming and yelling, hey, tell KB to stop lying on me. Tell him to stop lying on me. And I'm like, Short, I ain't lying. This is exactly what happened. And, uh, you know, he can't turn back history and change the course of events. So, 
he was really mad and everybody was like, you should probably just lay off of talking about it. So of course, you know, I didn't want to rock the boat. And again, even short was of the belief originally that Kim didn't sign off on this thing, but he knows now and he's known for years what I do. And he knows exactly how these tapes work. Most mm. people do now. Now you're li- now your viewers all, all your subscribers. Know. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, back then we didn't really have access to the Internet like we do now, you know. So a lot of stuff was able to still be fed to us. The bloggers weren't as big as they are now to really go after parties or or talk to parties involved. And now with him just hitting her DM and posting the DMs and she didn't refute anything that he had said. She just was like, calm down. I'm sorry. I just sent your email. Congratulations on the family. I had my lawyers. I I was with my lawyers when your manager threatened to release another take that didn't exist. And my son, who was five-year-old at the time, seeing an ad with my face crying. like So she just reiterated everything that she had put um, pretty much in the episode. Now, I don't know. Do you know WAC 100? That was WAC 1. Okay. Now, when you met with Wack, like, did he mention yeah. anything about a second tape? Uh, we didn't talk about this particular tape. This was a, a completely different meeting about something else. And uh, I had no idea who he was. He actually introduced himself as Cash Jones, and that's his other name that he went by. Oh, and then okay. I found out his name was Wack 100, and he was um, the game's manager. And I didn't realize that he had later become management of Ray J's as well, because Ray J also has another manager that does all his TV stuff named David Weintraub. That's the only guy that I knew who could pass himself off as Ray J's manager. So uh, I met with Wack. We had a very clandestine meeting, and uh, he's a scary dude, man. Like, I would not want to piss off Wack. And uh, I know that that guy gets money. That guy gets money for all his clients as well. I respect him. Um, okay. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about Wack. That's all I want to say about Wack. I feel you. But let's go back to this second yeah. tape. Is there anything you can give us hypothetically that was in the tape that could have ruined her career? I mean, look, if I told you that, I wouldn't be able to sell my book. And I wouldn't okay, be able cause you to. Okay, because you got to come back when that book comes yeah, out well, now. Hell, I know who my audience is after doing your show, girl. <laughs> now I know who's going to buy it. As I'm telling you, I just read your comment section. They were all like, I'm buying KB's book. Where's KB's book? I want to buy it right now. I'm like, Jesus, I better get this shit printed fast. Yeah, you should use Amazon. It's a lot faster. I had a guy who did Amazon, the print on demand. He sold over 100K worth of books on my show within the first uh, uh, interview. So, I mean, and everybody got their book. Amazon was... Uh, Pretty prompt. The problem about self-publishing, though, is about later selling the life rights and trying to turn it into a television show or movie. Like Usually you need a publisher to do that kind of thing, and usually okay. you get more heat going out there because the publisher will get you to press and book you on a, on a junket to go around and promote your stuff. <clears throat> See, I do all this stuff myself because I organically know how I can get traffic. I know how to cultivate eyeballs. I say one okay. thing, and the next thing you know, it's on every single gossip, you know, website. But, yeah, I, look, this is the year that Kardashian is not going to be according to me. It's just that I see what's going on. You know, once you achieve a certain level where people just get annoyed, like every day this week they've controlled the media. They have dominated the media with a stupid story whether it was her in the dress of Marilyn Monroe, right? Which, or her bleaching her hair to the point where it's going to break off and fall off her head. I don't give a shit anymore what happens. Next or it's losing be, 16 was, pounds in three weeks. Yeah, next is going to yeah. be Kim Kardashian made a dookie this morning that was this big. And that's going to be national news. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate you, uh, you know, touching on that. I mean, I know everybody reached out. They was like, got to bring Kim back on. But I did want to yeah. get into the stuff. Uh, I wanted right. to get into your career because, I mean, you started off, like you said, in the porn industry and stuff like that. And so um, I wanted to get your take on porn back then versus porn now. 
on well, how much the business has transitioned and how all of these celebrities all of a sudden are now porn stars on OnlyFans. It's funny because all these girls, when I, when I was coming up in the industry, girls would come out here, they'd get fresh off the bus, they would go to a porn agent, they would audition, which sometimes entailed them doing things that they wouldn't normally do in an audition when you meet somebody. Um, and then they would go out and be introduced to all the adult companies. It was called a go-see. So girls would go see the people who were the casting directors or the owners of these adult companies. And again, they would meet these girls and decide whether they were going to cast them or not. Then a girl would get paid maybe, I don't know, 500 $800 for a scene of just regular sex. And then, of course, it was always with the carrot led in front of them. Well, if you do anal or if you do a gangbang or if you do this, we'll make it 1200 or 1500 And back then, one scene would be, you know, maybe 20 minutes of a movie. That'd be an hour to an hour and a half. So they would put six or seven scenes in an adult movie. Sometimes it was five. And they knew the formula was we had to sell X amount of tapes in order to make our money back and then and then some. And they would distribute sex tapes to distributors who would sell them to the brick and mortar shops, right? That was the beginning. I came in right around the internet's boom. And I started watching guys literally take all the content that these girls were shooting, clip them up in the scenes and put them online and then sell them. So what I'm trying to get at here is the girls made the smallest amount of money and took the highest amount of risk, you know, disease-wise. And these girls have to get tested. Uh, now the testing is so safe. Well, I wouldn't say it's so safe. It's not 100% foolproof. But you know when you go on a set these days, if, if the person that you're having sex with is clean or dirty because you have to have a test within 48 hours. It's funny because when this COVID thing came along, and there's nothing funny about COVID, but if there were anybody that were ready to tackle the virus and the mitigation of the spread, it was the adult industry. because They had been doing this forever, you know, between AIDS and HIV to hepatitis, to, um, you know, herpes. Well, not so much herpes, they don't test for herpes, but gonorrhea and chlamydia. So we kind of knew what it was like to isolate yourselves. We kind of knew what it was like to, um, to go onto a set and possibly spread it. Uh, later on, obviously, the Internet changed everything. All of a sudden, the girl who was popular in a couple movies was now able to get into a niche because she's older, and now she's a MILF. And now there's an online website for MILFs, or there's this. or that. The niches became so varied in porn through the Internet that just about anything that you look for, you can find, whether it was little people, like midgets having socks, or girls that were hairy that just, you know, guys like hairy girls or anything you look for converts better than just straight hetero porn. And then there's the whole gay porn side of things, which is even better because the people that consume gay content, they retain the longest. They stay on every month looking for new content at twenty nine ninety five a month back when people were paying for it. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of money. You have about 5,000 members paying 30 bucks a month. You can do the math and see what kind of money people are Oh, of course. So the industry changed a lot. Um, now, girls have become emboldened. You know, now they no longer have to go to a porn company and make the multi-millionaire porn owner more money. Now they they have the vehicle with OnlyFans to actually make their own studio and broadcast it out of their house, and they make all the money with the exception of splitting. I think 30% goes back to OnlyFans. Um, that's why everybody and their sister is on it now, making money. There's celebrities on OnlyFans, like Bella Thorne, and there were a couple other people I was reading about. Um, this bad baby, which, don't believe the hype on this, by the way. She was a girl that went on Dr. Phil with the cash yeah. outside, <laughs> bitch. She, did. Yeah. she said she made $53 million off of her OnlyFans last year. Impossible. Impossible. She showed her stats, and I'm like, that's just Photoshop, man. There's not one girl on OnlyFans that makes over $5 million. I don't even know if there's a girl that makes 
three million dollars a year off of OnlyFans. I do know women that are making hundreds of thousands a month. But again, don't believe everything you read, man. That bad baby. Oh, and I'm shit. like, she's not even fucking really on her OnlyFans. Like, she's just showing her body. Exactly, man. Like, I'm just like. Three million, what? come on. I mean, she come had on. a company, I guess, that she partnered with to kind of help push her OnlyFans and stuff. Like, she's totally just kind of dipped into OnlyFans now. Bought her house cash, you know, um, in Florida. Um, she's. She looks really Florida. bad. Yeah. <laughs> Florida being Florida being the operative word. Every yeah. nut and crazy person lives in Florida these days, I right? Know. I'm from Florida, so I know. Trust me, I know. Where are um, you from in Florida? Panama City. Oh shit! Yeah, that's the redneck. That's the redneck Riviera. Riviera. The redneck Riviera, right? And that's where Joe Francis of Girls Wild fame, the scumbag. Yeah, who, by the MTV way, MTV was there for years. No associate with. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, he would go for there and they would shoot the girls, but you know, there's a huge post coming out on that's what I gotta believe. And there's an article. Check the Sun UK either today or tomorrow. I did the big interview talking about Joe Francis, but it's more mm -hmm. about the Kardashians and their relationship with Joe Francis. Because keep in mm -hmm. mind, Joe Francis is probably the biggest scumbag exploiter of women that ever exists. You know, people want to talk about Larry Flint or Pustler. Bob Guccione and Hugh Hefner exploiting women. No. no, they celebrated women. They didn't trick women into taking their tops off, right, when they were 18 years old or younger, allegedly, and taking video and pictures and then commercially selling it late night on TV. But Joe is a bad mm. guy, man. And this is, by the way, he lives in Punta Mita, uh, Mexico. Mm. And to this day, people like Mario Lopez and the Kardashians go down and visit him. They're still buds with them. Oh, wow. No, but, what does uh, that say about the family? <laughs> it's one thing to put out a sex tape of your daughter, right, and build a brand from a sex tape. Another thing to be friends with a person who had underage girls that he was taking videos of and also exploiting, hugely yeah. exploiting. And Panama City was real big on that. I, re I remember when that whole Girls Gone Wild thing got really big. They were hitting Panama City Beach, Daytona Beach, Miami Beach, and they were going down there. And these girls were teenagers from high school taking off their tops, you know, yeah. and, and, and having sex on camera, gangbangs, and all that stuff. And this is somebody's child. I remember parents. Oh, by the way. Go ahead. By the way, do you know, do you know what they were taking their tops off for? They would get a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars and a t-shirt. I remember that. And some yeah. beads, too. I think at one time he was giving out beads. In Mardi Gras, yeah. But that's yeah. The thing. He, <laughs> he, he, threw, he threw these crazy Super Bowl parties. I went to two of them. And um, that was the party that everybody looked forward to going to back in the day because it was bigger than ever. And the guy was making just incredible amounts of money. It's funny, but again, just like Girls Gone Wild, the Kardashians, the Hildens, they all get to that peak. You know, it's like a roller coaster. You get to that top of the roller coaster, and then it's... And boom. Right. right. Oh. No, no I, I, always, I always wonder with all these celebrities being so ashamed of, you know, doing OnlyFans, and now we see people like Black China who's having to go to OnlyFans just to pay for her case against the Kardashians. By the way, how do you feel about her losing that case? I think now she's white China, you know, <laughs> after losing that case. I mean, she, uh, you know, she broke like white China anyway. Like, uh, she yeah. did not stand a chance in hell going up against that family. You have to fight fire with fire. And they have the best lawyers they have the best representation you could go up against. And uh, Black China, I don't know. I don't know where she found her lawyer. I mean, it was like. Uh, I believe it was Lisa one Bloom. one of the big ones. It was Lisa mm, Bloom. I think if I'm not Was mistaken, it Lisa? Lisa was the one that initially. Hold on for a second. It was no. either Lisa or Gloria Allred. Because I know Lisa, and Lisa's now part of a lawsuit with this Paul Marciano, who's the owner of Guess, 
But she's okay. usually the one that stands up for the victimization of women when they are uh, mm -hmm. uh, attacked or coerced into you know, or raped. She was big on the Weinstein case with the Harvey Weinstein deal. Okay. Her name was Lynn Sinai. Exactly. Who? Now, we all heard of Lisa Bloom and Gloria Allred and Marty Singer and all these yeah. other guys. There it goes. You have to fight fire with fire. You can't you can't have some small time lawyer. And the other thing is the argument was terrible. If you look at what her arguments were, there was no way that that was gonna go over. And now everybody's also posting all of the stuff that Black China had, her cars and her jewelry and her clothes, and nobody feels sorry for them. Nobody I mean that's the other problem. The problem is everybody feels sorry for the Kardashians. So the poor Kardashians, you know. They're coming yeah. after the Kardashians. We, we must save them at all costs. Yeah, I, th I think she went about her case wrong. I mean, they did steal a lot from her, like her, trademarking her daughter's name. You know, uh, that was probably a big one. Like, you go to trademark your daughter's name to, you know, to put toys and stuff in her name. You come to find out the Kardashians own 100% of it. It is like, oh, yeah, but I'm her mom. They probably own all the domain names, too. For all they the do. kids, I guarantee if you, I guarantee if you were to go up and uh, look up True Kardashian or True this, it's probably all registered because oh, it is. you couldn't use it anyway. You couldn't use it anyway because, like I explained, it's the rights of publicity. You know that's mm -hmm. how you shut down a lot of these sex tapes. If you don't have the rights, you know the only person that can use the name Tasha K is Tasha K on the right. internet as far as entertainment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the thing about. You can't just use Kim Kardashian's name or Paris Hilton's name, anybody's name, without their proper sign off on it. Mm. No, so I mean, how I, I guess how as you know, someone who's worked in porn now, you see all of the all of these celebrities now, because I believe Pornhub was probably the first to come up with like your own kind of like channel and monetize yeah. it. I used to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to work with you, them. I used to do PR for Pornhub, and they uh, they changed the game because obviously they made porn free, and that's when after you let the genie out of the bottle, you ain't putting it back in. So now it's a whole new world where people are watching and consuming porn for free, and it went to an ad based situation. So now you go to a page and you go look at um, hot mom getting banged by stepson. Right, and then you look, and there might be three million views to that clip, but on the right hand side of Pornhub, you might see "Make your dick bigger," right, or uh, or use this sex toy, or go here. There's always an ad, and those ads, just so you guys know, sometimes cost between fifty thousand a day to a hundred thousand dollars a day because of the amount of views and eyeballs it gets. You're talking about tens of millions of people going there on a daily basis. Keep in mind, Tosh, when you walk down the street and someone sees you, you don't have a tattoo on your forehead that says, I love porn, right? I love porn hub. Right. Nobody comes out there and basically says, oh, yeah, this morning when I got up and I was having my coffee, I jerked off to uh, the MILF porn. But we all do it. That's the thing. Like, it was like years ago when I told Howard Stern on radio, nobody ever wanted to admit to listening to Howard Stern. And they would all say it's terrible. It's obscene. We must get them off the radio. When in actuality, all you had to do was turn the channel. But then once you turn the channel, they found that people were still going back and listening more. Mm. So, sounds very in familiar here. Sounds very right. familiar. I'm sure over here. a lot of people watch your show, but they'll probably never admit to watching. Oh, man. Right? All the, you know, man, I can't even go out in Atlanta. And I go out in Atlanta with a hat. I had on a I hat, bet. sunglasses. Tasha yeah. K. Oh, damn. Hey, I got to okay. ask you a question. What's up? Since we're talking, we're talking litigation. We're talking about exposure, right? So after we became friends, I had to look up your situation with uh, Cardi B. Uh -huh. You saw the video of her the other night after the Met Gala, right? He's mm -hmm. like, I hope everybody is drinking and has a good snort. Yeah, well, that's, what, talk about that's what I was sued for. I mean, come on. If, if you <laughs> That's what I case, said. Listen. You have to appeal this case because I'm no, telling we're you. No, we're in appeal right now. We're in appeal right now. My lawyer's okay. told me to shut the fuck up. 
while we're under a pill. Uh-huh. But I did give my two cents on that situation that I find it very, very um, uh, just contradicting that you would sue me for saying such yeah. a, uh, for even airing such a, egregious things about you and in your culture. Um, you look down on Coke. Coke has ruined the Latina culture. And even in the celebrity world, it is just devastating. And now you go tell your Playboy playmates, okay? And let's yeah. not let's not really go there about what Playboy um, has been exposed for here recently, okay? But now you're the PR rep for that, and you're telling your little playmates to go snort up. Like, I yeah, said, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll be submitting that. Like, she's <laughs> also a mom. Doesn't yeah, she a oh, mom? and that was the thing. If, if, I don't want my kids to grow up and see this. Like, this is just so awful. That's your kids, just great, awful. That's a great invitation of her. That's what she person. said when she cried. She was just like, I just, you know, it's just so awful that my kids are going to watch this stuff when they get older. And I, I work hard. I was a Catholic girl before I got to the strip club. And, you know. And Bravo. I found for no, it! That was brilliant. I love that. <laughs> Listen, that and they great. fell for it. Oh my god! I was in the yeah. courtroom like, no. It was my cockiness though that got me guilty because I was just over there. I was laughing my ass off because I'm like, they don't know her. I know her. <laughs> they yeah. don't know her. And, you, and I mean, it's look, always it, sympathy you, you, and payola. The world needs us, Tasha. The I know. Internet needs. The internet needs people like us because without people like us, it's just watching a bunch of bullshit everywhere. And someone's got to call bullshit. They would get mind fucked. They would get mind fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's but when I saw that, I said, now, nah, ain't this about a bitch? I said, oh, okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. No, we're we're yeah. under a pill right now. So, um, hopefully, Good. okay. Well, um, I thought of you. You know, I because juries you. don't, juries can ignore evidence and say, fuck you. Period. And yeah. there's nothing. Well, <sighs> the last thing you want to ever do is have a jury of your own peers. You're always better off with a judge. You, people okay. say all the time that a jury of your own peers is better because they, they'll, they'll feel for you. No. Oh. I've been around society too long to see how stupid these motherfuckers are. And, and when I sat downtown waiting to get called for jury duty and I sat next to the people I was sitting next to, look, I know I'm in L.A., and I'm not going to go about the, the, the socio demographics. And everybody, it's a very varied city, but the majority of the people living in the city are stupid motherfuckers. And I would not want them in a jury box controlling my fate. I would I'm be a lot right. better off with an educated judge looking at both sides of the situation and him making his opinion. And see, that was the thing too. Like even throughout the case, like the judge had a without looking he didn't look at the evidence until we got to our pre-trial hearing you know where we submit and finalize and you know he's finally like oh this is going to be interesting i don't understand how she filed a case and this is what i'm looking at and then he tells me you right. know right before the um the verdict is read that you know mrs Keeby, like obviously you know who you are on the videos it's not who you are in person you know you're a very conserve respect conservative respectable young lady and you know um i'm, I'm not going to change the law because literally clearly these videos were your opinions based off of what you saw you see what i'm saying so like right. if i didn't see anything there was no opinions you see what i'm saying there was no oh i'm going to get my i don't just make up shit out of thin air to say oh i'm just gonna put this out today no the shit is right there so um of course you know he he, he no I, I believe he know he fucked me in that he did he fucked me. He he withheld a lot of shit, and it was like I was. On maybe trial. he didn't. Maybe maybe he didn't really fuck you. Maybe he just put a dildo inside of you while you were sleeping. You you. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But I do appreciate yeah. all the press. I mean, like a lot of press. We've, we've well, it definitely... made you it made you bigger. I hate to say it, but every time I get sued, I make more money. So yeah, like, try, you can't buy. You can't buy that amount of exposure Mm-mm. but at the end of the day if it costs you money with paying out legal fees and stuff it's not fun either no so 
But no, I, I really do appreciate you uh, coming through here. But real quick, I'm going to ask you one question before we wrap this up. I'm going to let you go back to sleep because I know you're a little hungover and shit. Oh, I'm not going back to sleep. I'm not going back to sleep. I got to make money. Which, I got to make money today. I feel you. Which end of the you the kitchen tool was in, I, I believe, Oscar De La Hoya's anus? Well, I mean, the handle. You can't put the other side of a whisk up, up your ass. We didn't you? know. <laughs> We I'm just know. trying to get the visual. I'm wondering if you could stick the handle up, up your ass and then actually whisk some eggs with your ass. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that would be quite a skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's funny because somebody else asked me that question. I'm like, come on, man. How are you? You're not going <laughs> to stick one side of a spatula. There's only one side of a spatula that's going to work that way, right? Yeah, man, we, I was just, everyone was asking, so I had to ask the infamous question. I was like, okay, <laughs> Kevin, which end? I guess they want to I see love what he's working with. Is he wide or viewers. is he tight? You know, so um, Kevin Blatt, I do appreciate you coming through. When are you going to have that book ready? Uh, soon. I just got some good news yesterday that there's one publisher that's uh, very interested says he'll publish it. And, um, you know, obviously once you get that, then a bidding war is supposed to ensue. So I'm sitting here hopefully – Hoping for that bidding war so I could come back to unwind with Tasha K. I hope so. And too. make my hundred thousand dollars in one day. I hope so too. <laughs> as long as as long as you, the viewer, want to buy it, I will push forward to get this out because there's too much truth that's not being said right now, and I need yeah. to really get that information out there. We're gonna we're gonna need that. We're gonna really really need yeah. that. So hurry, hurry up, as we say in the south. Hurry up. Hurry up. Yes, her up. All right, Kevin well, Black guys. Now get, huh? now get on, now <laughs> get, get on. on. That's right, <laughs> Kevin Black guys. Thank you so much for coming through here again. Part two. We will definitely see you here again for part three when you have that motherfucking book ready. Okay. It's coming. Don't forget <laughs> if you guys at home have anything, anything that you feel might be on the fence as far as making money, salacious pitch. Dick pics, text messages, sex tapes. Holla at your boy. At All Kevin right, Black. <laughs> and with that being said, now we gotta go. Bye. <laughs>